Thumb sucking. What do you need to know? First, does it damage your child? Well, it certainly can. In, den in dentistry and orthodontics, we talk about skeletal and dental effects. These are divisions that we make so that we can understand points and be specific in discussion. These aren't points that are delineated in the same way that you might imagine. But it's common that thumbs can make a large difference in the dental positions of the teeth. A thumb placed in the mouth will tend to make the lower teeth tip backwards and will make the upper teeth fit forwards so that the teeth are in an unusual position. And that's an effect that is commonly seen. But it's not always seen. And some children th suck their thumb quite a lot and don't have these effects. So we know that it's not clear what damage thumb sucking causes. And that's backed up by the research that's not very obvious in its findings. And the reason we think that is, is that there can be two effects from thumb sucking. We mentioned the skeletal effect. The skeletal effect is influenced in two different ways. And that depends on how the child sucks their thumb. Some children suck forcefully, pushing their thumb up. As they suck, the tongue, the tooth is between the teeth, having the effect I described commonly. But the force of pushing up on their top jaw holds the top jaw up and forwards. And as far as the top jaw is concerned, this can actually be beneficial. It can make the middle section of the face look better. So although you have a dental problem, the middle section of the face looks good. The other type of thumb sucking is where the very much more passive thumb sucking, where a child's mouth is more open and hanging down, with the thumb just in the space between an open jaws. And this is the very problematic, let's say dangerous form of thumb sucking. This is the thumb sucking that causes the big damage. In this, the face drops down more. The maxilla drops lower. The mandible hinges open. To gain a good understanding of this pattern of facial change, it's worth seeing some of my comments on craniofacial dystrophy. But in short, that this thumb sucking lengthens the face. And as the face lengthens and drops back, it can easily become asymmetric. And that can often be determined by the nature of thumb sucking that's occurring. Interestingly, for most children, until the age of about late two, early to middle threes, it's unusual to have had much skeletal damage from thumb sucking. It's reported that many indigenous populations got all of the children to suck their thumbs as per normal. But because of the stronger and tougher diet, and because of the lack of nasal obstructions leading to a change of the tongue posture, there were very little rep problems reported within these groups. In fact, they had perfectly straight teeth and well-developed faces. And we think that there's a relatively good immunity to problems under the age of two years old, before children would have started to have a high level of tough food. Now, it brings into question whether you should allow your child to have a dummy or suck their thumb. Because, of course, one of the advantages of dummies is they can be removed. It's much more difficult to remove or to isolate a thumb. There are methods to do it. Usually, I've found it very difficult to stop a child sucking their thumb under the age of about four years old. They have to cognitively want to su stop sucking. 
you have to reason that through with them. And under the age of about four years old, I've found that very difficult. It's an interesting and quite a diverse topic. And if you want more information, please follow the link below.